Hello, horror fiends, and welcome to Guess What? You're Wrong, the podcast where we dive into all things horror and spoil the hell out of every movie we discuss. With me, Big D, as your host, be prepared for a terrifyingly good time. From classic slasher flicks to contemporary horror masterpieces, we're going to explore the genre from every angle that we can and leave no stone unturned. Horror, Prince, and Shine. New conversations, same podcast. So buckle up, Bonehead, because you're going for a ride. Enjoy the show! Now, before we get into this episode too far, I just got a little disclaimer here. First off, all audio used in this podcast is used under the protection of fair use. And as with all the movie reviews that I do here on Guess What? You're Wrong. We're going to spoil the hell out of every single thing we talk about. So, you have been warned. Hello and welcome back to another stupendously groovy episode of Guess What? You're Wrong. Now, today, as you can see, Dave from the Piedmont Triad Podcast is back. And that can only mean one thing. That means that we are tackling Ash vs. the Evil Dead Season 3, the season closer for this series. Yeah, this, this chapter of awesomeness that is Evil Dead. First, before I, before we go any further, Dave, I got to tell you, I love that shirt. Oh, thank you, Love that man. shirt, man. You're the second one to enjoy this one today. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> I love some typo. It's been a while. I, this is my favorite album by them. I love is this it? record. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. Remember the first time I heard typo, I was like, what the hell is this? But yeah, I love it. It was bizarre. I know. Because his voice, Peter Steele's voice was so just. Yeah. It was overwhelming. It was so unique. Yeah. It's, but I love it. I was like, I was hooked. Oh, yeah. Me you too. Know? Like the first time I heard Misfits, too. I'm like, yeah, well, just hooked me in, <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, so Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 3. <sighs> Man, a lot happens in this season. Um, mm. I remember when they announced that this was the final season. Mm. You know, I was a little sad. You know? Yeah. Because you, you, want, you want it to go on forever. Uh, yeah, yeah. But we also know that Bruce Campbell is getting up there in age. And yeah. He couldn't take it anymore, really. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, I kind of got that feeling too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he did. And uh, in, in season three, he still had his um, a lot of his ash moments, you know, where he's getting splashed and you know a lot of action and stuff. But mm. I noticed that it's toned down a lot with, with a lot of his yeah. physical fighting and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but then we have like you know Kelly and Pablo, uh, and everybody else in his daughter taking up a lot of beatings. So <laughs> <laughs> this, he has a daughter. I know. How crazy I, is that? <laughs> I do love the explanation though. Yeah, I was. <laughs> so the season opens up. Ash is a town hero, right? He, op <laughs> he, he took over his dad's hardware shop. And and now it's not only a hardware shop, it's a hardware shop and sex toy shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm not going to lie. That's actually, that's a pretty solid <laughs> crossover. I can see a couple of those things working well together. <laughs> yeah. And his commercial that he puts out there, he's so proud of it. But, you know, here at Ashy Slashies, and I'm like, oh, dude, he's just going all in it. But the town loves him. And it's great. You know, he's he's a real hero. Um, like we all know he is, but his mm. town didn't really think so. So, but this is where his wife shows up. Candy bar. <laughs> Tell me that's not a stripper's name. Oh, I know. That's right <laughs> up there with cinnamon, you know? <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah. Shows up. Um, evidently. Um, this is where Ash finds out that he has a daughter. Because Candace Barr is like, I'm your wife. And one of your dead things attacked our daughter at the high school. And he's 
Wait, maybe you got me mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> In typical Ash fashion, you know. Um, and it does take him a little bit of a little while to, you know, get into this uh, where um, he actually has a daughter. You know, but uh, they go to the they go to the to the school. They load up, get out there, and you know we saw we saw the the, the girl earlier. What's her, I can't remember her darn name now. You're talking about the daughter's friend? No, Ash's daughter. You remember what? Oh, I don't. Uh, I, can't oh, I don't remember her name at all. I'm terrible with just, names. I'm the fucking worst at that. I was just watching it, and I can't not remember the heck of life of me. Brandy, Brandy's yeah, her, her name. There you go. Yeah. So we see Brandy earlier um, with her friend, her little blonde cheerleader friend, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or not even a cheerleader; she's like a punk rock fan friend or something like that. Um, but then the school mascot passes them by. They call, you know, lovingly call Coogie. And uh, they say something to him or something. I don't know how some con- some confrontation happens. But then Coogie comes back because he's possessed by a deadite. He's you know the evil. And needless to say, the, the 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 cute punk rock friend girl gets possessed as well. Um, Ash shows up with Candy Bar, and this harp scene. <laughs> with the, with the the girl the friend. Wow. Well, that was before, beautiful. Before the harp scene, we actually have uh, she throws a cymbal. You know, from a drum set, throws the cymbal like a frisbee at Candy Bar, and she goes to catch it. Cuts cuts her head right off. Rain fingers. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude. One thing, one thing about this series, you know, it, it definitely delivers on the blood and gore. You know, mm-hmm. and the death scenes that you see in these things, you're like, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. You know, and then we move yeah, on. to... I love that they lean so hard into it as well. That's oh yeah, a, it, it, that makes it so much better for it me. It's awesome. And then that leads us to that the harp scene, like we were talking about, where the girl's face just—it's like a loaf of bread. <laughs> It's like you could run your thumb across it. <laughs> yeah, it was. It looked like um, a Christmas Jello loaf, and you just sliced it through. That. It's like wow, dude! And the way it just kind of slowly falls <laughs> open, and then they've got all the detail yep. of the brain and the cross sections. <laughs> Ooh, I still have a bit, a bit of a cough here. Got over a cold oh, a couple it, weeks ago. Oh. I, was, I thought it was going to be, uh, I've been, you've been smoking too much weed again. No, not today. <laughs> um, but so this leads us in a, to the second episode here. Um, well, we, 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 we forgot how evil, because Ash had defeated evil at the end of part, at the end of season two, right? Yeah. So we forgot how evil comes back. At the beginning of, of the episode one, uh, we see this girl, they're like doing an antiques roadshow type of deal, right? And so this girl brings it, is this is this worth anything? And of course the guy opens it, oh, this seems to be written in ancient Sumerian or, or whatever he says. And of course he starts reading from the book. The Necronomicon. Mm-hmm. Which brings the evil back. And then Ruby shows up because she sensed the book. And this Ruby is still that younger evil Ruby, the actual um, dark one. Because mm-hmm. the, the humanized or the human version got killed in the, the last season. So she's back and she disguises herself as Mrs. Previtt, a school guidance counselor, who we in turn find out Brandy has been running to because now her mom's dead. She has to live with her dad, Ash. And she thinks he's kind of um, wackadoo, something like that, you know? Yeah, but yeah. She, as, as she should. She quickly finds out that it's kind of real, you know? Um, so they go through, we have this whole thing with 
her teen angst type of thing uh, and living with Ash, right? You know, she's not wanting to stay with them. She's He put her up in uh, in Linda's room. And I'm like, not Linda's, not Linda's room, uh, Cheryl's room. Yeah. Cheryl's yeah. room. And she's looking around at the pictures and everything. And it's kind of freaking her out. But, you know, Ruby being back on the scene, you know, it's not going to be too good, right? Mm-hmm. And after after season two, her attempt at recreating um, an, another ad. Oh, wait, no, that's in this one. This is where she tries to create oh, yeah. baby Ash. That's right. Boy, I got them mixed up there. Jeep, creepers. Uh, but before that happens, Ruby brings somebody back from the dead. Rock <laughs> or cock, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they they bring Brock back to life. Uh, we don't. I remember when I first saw this episode um, when it was on. Actually, I didn't watch it on Stars. I I think I downloaded it or something. I don't know. I was one. I was one of those people that the reason why I got canceled. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think there were a lot. Of them. <laughs> there was a lot. But nobody wanted to pay for a Stars membership. You yeah, know? Stars wasn't anything at that time at all. I would, no. yeah, no. But uh, so we have. I remember when I first saw this episode. You just all you see is somebody coming out of the grave, and you see feet walking. I remember thinking, "Oh my gosh." Who is this? Who is it? Um, and, you know, and then you see go up to the shower. They're taking a shower and the mud and everything, the gunk and everything's falling off. And it's not until Brandy thinks that Ash is back, I think, and she goes downstairs and Brock's sitting down there. Mm-hmm. So they're having some good um, grandfather and uh, granddaughter time. Short lived because Ash comes home, and Ash knows that uh, Ash knows that he's dead. He's got to be a deadite, you know. He's so it ensues. You know, they they're sitting there. Uh, Brock and Brandy are sitting there uh, watching Ash's commercial over and over and over again, just laughing, just laughing. Yeah, don't they? I think the dad is like, oh, yeah, look at this. He sucks or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> he says something really shitty about the commercial, <laughs> man. It was so messed up. It was bad. I mean, the commercial, <laughs> it wasn't the best commercial in the world. No, no, it, it was not winning an award. <laughs> but uh, so Brandy, she, she leaves for some reason. Where she go upstairs or? She gets mad at Ash or something like that. But then the fight ensues with uh, Brock and Ash. or uh, Yeah, Brock and Ash. I can't remember why Brandy left. I Yeah, I can't either. I want to say she was mad at, yeah. at, at them arguing or something like that. Probably. I, it, I mean, because they always argue. Probably mad at Ash is what it was. Mm-hmm. You know? um, but she leaves. The fight ensues. Uh, of course, Ashy Slashy. Guts all over the floor. Dismemberment. He's dead once again. Um, and of course, Becky gets to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, because that this it wouldn't be this show if someone wasn't Tra- mentally traumatized by blood and grew splattering uh-huh. into every part of their eye and every hole in their body to, to yeah. you know, maximize the potential for uh, any kind of bloodboard pathogen <laughs> reaching inside and getting you. Yeah, and then needing that, uh, needing mental help afterwards for years <laughs> and years. I mean, that's Ash's problem. He never got mental help. Yeah, yeah. He'd probably a little therapy would be beneficial. Yeah. Well, he's probably got a lot of PTSD, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, this is where also we have Kelly and Pablo... Oh, and the new guy that shows up, we have a new a, a new faction uh, that we learn that shows up. Uh, they're called the the Knights of 
the Renaissance or something like yeah, that. Knights, yeah, Knights of something or other. I don't remember what they're from. I could probably find it here. Um, but Dalton, he shows up, um, and his when he first meets Ash, he like bows, gets on his knee, you know, drops to a knee and bows, and he's like, "Oh, we're here to to help and protect the the chosen one." Now, to me, it seems like these are the descendants from the knights from Army of Darkness. Yeah, was that what That's you got? What I thought too. Yeah. yeah. Because they go, it's going to bother me now. They're the Knights of something or other. I can't remember what it was. Um, oh, well. But, yeah, uh, I can't remember either. I just call them Knights, Knights of, of Sumeria. Right now. The Knights of Sumeria. There yeah, you go. Yeah, that's it. All right. I knew, I knew. It takes a little while to get it going, but once it gets going. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Dalton, uh, Kelly, and Pablo decide... We need to go, we need to find the Kandarian dagger. It's got to be at the site where the cabin used to be. It got destroyed. It's got to be there. Um, and Dalton has been talking trash to Kelly about Pablo. Well, it's like a soap opera. Or it is. Yeah. You no. Know, he's talking trash to Kelly about Pablo because Pablo's getting those uh, uh, Necronomicon titles and words and everything all over his body again. They reappeared. Wow, Dalton is really turning on the wrong person. <laughs> it's yeah. like Kelly and Pablo are kind of yeah. like, you know, like two nuts in a sack. You know, you gotta, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, but they go out there, they find the Kandarian dagger after some digging and rooting around. Uh, they find it. Awesome. Um, let's see, where were we at? Yeah, they return to the cabin, find Canary Nagger. Now, this is a, the point that we have. Brock actually comes back as like a, a spirit, mm -hmm. right? And he's talking to, he's talking to um, Ash about telling him something that would change his existence. This is what he was going to tell him before he got his head run over when he was little. Mm -hmm. Or not little, but the last season, little. Yeah. My son yeah. just walked in. I'm thinking little. Uh, <laughs> but, and uh, the last season, uh, he takes him on this trip, you know, like in the, in the past, you know, kind of like the uh, Ghost of Christmas it's a Past. Wonderful, Evil Dead. Yeah. Kind of thing. And uh, takes him into the, you know, they, they're one, and it's a funny scene. Because Brock just walks through the door of the of the uh, hardware store, and Ash tries to, but he can't do it because he's not a ghost. He goes in there and like like the Chris, you know, they can't they can't interact with the people there, but they can watch and observe. So he's watching Brock, you know, work cash writers, doing all that stuff here, and somebody walks in from the Knights of Samaria, and it's like. Are you, uh, you know, Ashley J. Williams' dad? He's like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, we got something important to tell him with the, uh, you know, the Necronomicon goes like this, and Brock's having none of it. You know, Brock's like, get out, get leave me, or whatever. He starts. There's a cellar where uh, this basement that he has attached to this hardware store <laughs> is enormous, dude. It is. I was thinking about that when they were going down there. I was like. Someone would notice this. <laughs> he, all that, all that storage. I mean, he's got cans of spam and all kinds of stuff down there in the shelves. I'm like, Dude, boy, he's preparing there. But uh, you know, he goes over to go downstairs to the cellar to get some supplies or something like that. And, and uh, the night comes around, and Brock clocks him. He tumbles down the stairs. Brock, Brock assumes he's dead. So. <laughs> So he he had some pages from the Necronomicon, right? Goes down there. He falls down the stairs. Brock seals up the door. Seals it up and puts stuff over top of it. Yeah. <laughs> then Ash is like, "What? What? This is what? This is what's going to change my life? What?" 
<laughs> yeah, he's like, you just left him down. There? <laughs> so they, they, they like, got, I, I love that it offended Ash's moral code. Yeah, like just, the, the fact that he even had one. <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, he goes, they go down there, they go down the stairs. And as soon as it, you come to the landing, he looks down and there's no body. There's no bones. There's nothing there. So, oh, oh, shit. They go down there. They find out that the guy wasn't dead. <laughs> so Brock had locked up a live person in his cellar who eventually did starve to death, but he lived for quite some time off of Brock's rations and stuff that he had down there. And what, what, what does he say? <laughs> the asshole, the asshole ate my, ate my stash or something like that, dude. Uh, but then they do go over. He eventually did die of starvation, I'm guessing, uh, or something. But he had a lo- all along this wall in the uh, in the set in the cellar, the basement. He had painted the passages from the Necronomicon that uh, he had remembered, I guess, or something like that. Wow. I can't say how awesome it would be to have a basement this size. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> just seeing it. And it even looked like there was a wall that was dividing because it looked like a part of it was knocked down or something. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like it had all kinds of stuff going on. I mean, this was... This was not a small task, whoever built this basement. Yeah, I know. And it, but th- and this basement plays a very, very important role um, going out throughout the rest of this of this season. Um, it's, it's a very, very important place. You know, um, and then we come to after, okay, Ash learns all this stuff. Okay. Um, Asher Brock makes discovery of the hardware store, Kelly. Uh, and this is where Kelly and... Brandy, who do they? This is where they they see uh, Ruby, right? No, that's not Does Ruby. Show up here? No. Or is it Dalton that's with her? It could be Dalton. I don't remember. I don't remember. But I know that uh, that they they head back. So Ruby. Now I'm forgetting all the people that were there. Let's just go on to the they next scene. a lot of characters in this one. I yeah, don't I know. blame you for getting them mixed up. It's, uh, yeah. Okay, so. They, yeah, yes, because when, um, doesn't, doesn't somebody show up out by at the, at the campsite? Or, yeah, with a, maybe not. Where they found the canary and dagger, I thought somebody showed up there. Oh, yeah, somebody did show up. Uh, well, it was Ruby. Was it Ruby? Yeah, because okay. I, I think this is where Dalton dies, right? And he, oh, and, yes, and Ruby yes. brings him back as a deadite to, to to try and get something out of him or something, but he won't talk or whatever. She kills him. He's dead. I, I'm pretty sure that's where this is the the scene where Dalton dies. Yeah, um, yeah. He comes back later on, and we'll get into that in a second here, but. Wow. Ruby, this is where Ruby hatches this plan. Um, she starts this whole scene where she opens the Necronomicon and, you know, that, that scene where Ash is holding the, the chainsaw mm-hmm. hand up and she, like, cuts herself and bleeds all over it and smeared it around. Mm-hmm. And then she, yeah. she it, it, for some reason, it makes this jello like substance and she starts to eat it yeah. and then as she's eating it you know which I'm guessing this is probably true because as she's eating it she's gagging up bleh, bleh. yeah I bet you I mean I would have been gagging pretty hard eating that stuff uh, yeah yeah e- even if it was jello I'd still be like oh this is just gross yeah. man Lucy Lawless boy yeah, she's a trooper, dude. She did some stuff for the series. I'm telling you that. Yeah, um, and she's still a good looking woman. Oh yeah! Wow. Yeah, I, I was very impressed with her. I mean, I I already liked her. But yeah. After this, the way she just threw herself into it, I was like, yeah, she's just great. Everything, and we we get to I like this this season because we get to see Ruby, um, 
as one of the dark ones. You know, we saw a little bit um, at the end of season one and beginning of season two, but then she started becoming more human in season two. So we didn't really get to see a lot of that uh, dark one, Ruby. And in this one, that's all it is. She's just an evil, yeah. evil Ruby. You know, and so, but we do find out that she's eating this slimy stuff. It, it, she got, she gets pregnant. I didn't know that's how it worked, but, you know. Yeah, that wasn't my biology class. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was different. <laughs> yeah, it was a little different. Um, but yeah, you know, she's, it, she's driving. Cause where's she, where's she at when she does this? Cause she's not at, at Miss Prevett's house because she's trying to drive back to Miss Prevett's house. Yeah. And that's when you start seeing her stomach and she, she wrecks, pulls over her stomach kind of <laughs> baby comes out. Yeah, She's like holding her mouth and she's like, no, you can't do this yet. Yeah. The baby pops out and you know, the, just the blood scene inside the car. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere, yeah, because that's when the uh, Norwegian hitchhiker, yeah, they, see her blowing up in the car. <laughs> just happened to, just happened to be Norwegian hitchhikers walking by, um, and they open the back door and there's a baby laying there. I'm like, oh, it's a baby. It's like, yeah, yeah. You, you, if you know what you're watching, you know <laughs> damn good and well. <laughs> but I don't, even if I did. If I was a, walking on the side of the road and I saw somebody pulled over a crash and then and all of a sudden a big explosion of blood inside the car, I ain't opening no fucking doors. Mm-mm. I'm not doing I'm not opening a door at all. And yeah, I'm getting the fuck out of there. <laughs> even if I did and I saw a baby, I'm gonna be like, nah, I close the door, mm-hmm. time to walk away. But no uh, yeah, this is not gonna go well. <laughs> But no, no. Maybe it's because they're Norwegian. Maybe they're nicer. I don't know. They decide right. to they decide to get the baby and try and comfort it, clean it up because they're going to take it into I don't know the hospital or something. But they are sadly mistaken because the baby ends up turning around and like eats them. Baby's got that big jaw that opens up and teeth and that was awesome. And you just hear that that scream that it, that it does. You're like, oh, shit. And, of course, Ruby gets up, cuts off the umbilical cord and all that stuff. And all her, you can see just ripped open, you know, and it starts healing up and stuff. Dude. <laughs> that was such a great, great scene there. I love that scene. I love it because when she gets out, she's got um, her, her rib cage. Yeah, I know. Just like splayed open, and and I, it doesn't she bite the umbil- umbilical cord yep. off? <laughs> it's just like, and she plays it serious. That's what I love about it. There's nothing there to indicate that she's winking at you. It's no like, no, this is the role that I'm playing, and I just burst a baby out of my belly, and everything's hanging out, <laughs> but it'll go back. <laughs> yeah, it'll go back. Yeah, she's a dark one, you know. Now, isn't it? I, I hope I'm not confusing the, the seasons again. I, I'm pretty sure this is what this isn't. This is the one where Pablo starts to see the naked girl. Yeah, 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 that, uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the, the masked girl. Yeah, yeah. And he and he's like freaking out. And Kelly comes in. Says, Kelly, there was a naked girl here. <laughs> Kelly's like, okay. Oh yeah, and his follow up is. I mean, that happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not strange. Um, but this is an interesting, uh, happen happening to, to Pablo because this, a naked woman is like a, I guess she's like a witch, I'm guessing something like that. Um, she was sent by his brujo, his uncle, um, to help guide him to the right path. And he has to make a choice. You know, they have. He's got like two chalices, or was it two chalices or three? Two chalices of blood or something? Oh, uh, three. Yeah, three? three of them. He yeah. has to make a choice. And if he chooses the right one, that means he's chosen the right path. And he becomes Brujo Especial. <laughs> Isn't that a beer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah, it was awesome. 
But uh, yeah, of course, he chooses the right one. And that's the big thing, you know. Pablo was cut up, dude. I'm just trying to, every time they show him, I'm like, dude, that. Yeah, I swear his arms got bigger. I wish my dad season. bod would look like that. <laughs> God. <laughs> you know, he's. Don't we all? Man. But uh, yeah, Brujo Especial. So we know that that's going to play an important part. Um, because they wouldn't just give Pablo this huge thing if it wasn't going to play an important part. <sighs> Boy. And we have Ash bonding with his daughter. Uh, more Knights of Sumeria join Pablo uh, and him to defeat evil. More knights show up. I don't, these Knights of Sumeria are supposed to be, I mean, you see, you hear that. Uh, you hear their history and how they've been. You think they'd be badasses? Yeah, yeah. I, I was expecting a lot more from them, honestly. But they're not. I mean, they're yeah, just. Yeah, they were cannon fodder. <laughs> yeah, that's all they were. Somebody to get in the way to help our, our guys get away. Is pretty much all it was, you know. Um, and then we have this. This is the scene here where Kelly decides that you know I'm done. I'm going to go kill Ruby myself. She knows where she's living. She Miss Previtt's house. She goes there with the Candarian dagger, mind you, of which Ash needs. Um, she goes there to try and kill Ruby by herself. Doesn't turn That's out too good. Idea. Yeah. Now we uh, Kelly's badass. We love Kelly. Yeah. But Ruby is a dark one, and you're not the chosen one. You know, I'm like, oh, Kelly. I remember when I first saw this episode, I was like, no. That, and it doesn't turn out good for Kelly. I mean, of course. Oh, no. She gets, uh, yeah. she gets murder-lated there. Um, but another <laughs> twist. You say murder-lated? Murder-lated. <laughs> oh, that's said murder-lated. I was like, yeah. I'm going to use that. Well, that's what I said. <laughs> murder-lated. <laughs> but uh, there's a little twist here. We find out that... Um, there is what's the, the the girl's name? Oh, I can't remember her name now. Because there's there's one they call it the traitor. That uh, she's the one that, with Ruby, betrayed the Dark Ones, and Ruby brings her soul back and takes Kelly's body. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I can't remember her name though. Yeah. It starts with a. I don't know. Starts with an M or starts with some letter from the alphabet. I don't know. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Because I completely forgot it was. Yeah, that she was working with somebody else. Yeah, I I completely blanked on that. So I definitely don't remember her name. Yeah, I don't see it in my notes here, dear. Uh, oh well, I must not have written it down. But yeah, so Kelly's body is possessed. We think Kelly's dead. Um. And I was really, I really thought they may have killed her. Yeah. Even though I know in the back of my mind there's a possibility anybody could come back, I really did think they had killed her off. Yeah. It was, it was sad. But we, we did also leave out the whole part um, with the, the very large Norwegian woman, woman um, that was upstairs chained to a, a sink uh, when Ash shows up and Ruby's not there. But he goes upstairs and he rushes in, busts the door down. She's shh, shh, shh. gotta be quiet because he's asleep. And this is our first look at this baby mm-hmm. is grown up a little bit, a toddler now. Um, but dude, this the chainsaw hand on this thing, yeah, it's got a <laughs> biological chainsaw hand. It just looks. It looks wrong, but yeah. so cool. You know, I was just like, yeah. it looks so cool. <laughs> and, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I laughed, but I also rolled my eyes a bit at that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're like, oh, but you know. I mean, I, I'll, I will never, ever knock them for not. They've always leaned into it. Yeah. Even if it's not the best idea, yeah. I, I admire their dedication. They They do lean into it. And I didn't really mind it, you know, 
but we know that this baby is a supernatural baby, so it's not going to be a baby for long. But we have this whole scene um, where now Ash, he's having a problem with his hand that uh, that Pablo made for him. It's like, it locks up. And he goes to pull the sink off, but it, his hand locked up on it, and he can't get it off. The baby's coming at him. And, you know, they end up getting outside the door, closing the door. And the the large Norwegian woman, as he calls her, is is handcuffed to the sink. And his his hand is, he's basically handcuffed to the sink as well because he can't let go. <laughs> yeah, just him going, nah! <laughs> and it's just like, it looks as simple as just letting go. <laughs> yeah, and we did, we got, doesn't the baby's chainsaw hand start cutting through the door? No, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's very uh, shining esque. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, you know, then I'm they sorry, get down. Not shining Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What yeah, <laughs> mixing up my classics. The uh, they get downstairs. The, there's a battle, small battle here. Um, they get unlocked. You know, handcuffed from each other. The large Norwegian woman doesn't fare too well. I'll say that. <laughs> um. She gets her head cut off, right? I think so. Because, yeah, she gets her head cut off because the baby crawls up inside her and Nash is like, oh, you shouldn't be going down there yet. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. It was doing the uh, the jack in the box. <laughs> yeah. And he, he basically, he, gets in, he crawls inside this woman and is controlling her body. And he keeps popping his head out of the uh, where the, her head was. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Ash. Yeah, they they really went into the Looney Tunes cartoonishness oh, yeah. of some of the ridiculous stuff in there. The, this whole scene, this whole thing is filled with slapstick. You know, this whole oh, yeah. scene with, with the baby and the, the large Norwegian woman. Oh, boy. But I'm telling you, we have uh, Ash gets the baby out, right? Ash is going to take the baby and prove it. I think he wants to prove it to Brandy. Right, mm-hmm. he wants yeah. to prove that Miss um, Previtt, who we all know is Ruby, he wants to prove that she's not good. Mm-hmm. Um, well, she's not your friend. When Ash shows up in town to show his daughter, the police are there with her. Was it the police? Right? Yeah, they're there with mm-hmm. her. And he opens the trunk. Ah, proof. Opens the trunk. And it's not a demon baby. It's it's a baby. Just a sweet little toddler. Yeah. And they're like, you kidnapped that? But, he's all covered in blood. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but Brandy knows something's up. And, you know, they jump into the uh, the Delta and they haul ass. But uh, Ruby obviously gets her child back. Um, because... We have this whole scene now where he's he, he grows up and he has to cut his hand off because Ruby's whole plan is that I, this is one of the things that they said we, we we skipped over the whole sperm bank scene too. I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, Ruby's whole thing was that okay, we need to kill off Ash and all of his seed and. My version of Ash will take his place as the chosen one. Good for Ruby. That's why she created she created this baby. And that's why now it's older. He has to cut off his hand so he could look like Ash and try and take Ash's place. Because the plan is that he's going to kill Ash. Having to get rid of his seed. <laughs> this is something I ne- never thought I would have seen. I guess maybe you know I should I should have after the second in a weird season way you should have expected that. after the second season in in the butt and you know the yeah. dangling <laughs> I, I guess it shouldn't have surprised me but uh, Ash goes and is like can I get a record of everybody that got because he's thinking that it's because that he has other children out there like Brandy you know so he's like I need a list of everybody that got some of my you know my deposits. And I may have kids. And he talks to the, the girl, the nurse in there or whatever. He talks to the nurse in there, giving it to him. Okay. He's like, well, I guess since I'm here, I might as well make a deposit. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's opening up the titty magazines. And of course, Evil Dead fashion, a hand, they come alive. A hand comes out, grabs his junk. <laughs> <laughs> and he screams, he runs out. Um, there was there was a, an Asian woman who gets possessed by a deadite. And she's gra- she's grabbing these vials of semen and yeah. through shooting them, <laughs> shooting globs of semen. Come like, on, yeah, it's just the way it splatters. Yeah. And he's dodging them like they're bullets and <laughs> hits the wall. And, <laughs> and, and see, I was already laughing pretty hard about the fact that that nurse. Uh, gave up HIPAA records yeah. for a thirty percent discount because <laughs> he said he says twenty and she says thirty would be better. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, then next thing you know, they they're just loads flying all over the place. <laughs> I was like, oh. I, I I just appreciate the silliness that they they that they put into this. They're like, you know what would be really funny. And then they write it down, and they're like, "This has got to be structured <laughs> like a story." <laughs> it's just like, "What in God's green earth made possessed you to uh, pun intended to, yeah. to do this?" You know, <laughs> I mean, in this, well, the hand ended up comes on, coming off. You know, it he puts it in a, a filing cabinet, dude. This, and then when he comes back out to see Kelly and Pablo, he's got. Right in his crotch, he's got that big old cum stain. <laughs> You're like, uh, what is that? <laughs> Only ash, dude. Only ash. <laughs> he could pull that off, clean himself up, and still be cool. Yeah. I mean, if, if yeah, you were if, like, that's ah, just another day. If you or I did that, we'd be like, pariahs. <laughs> that's the guy right there. That's him. Yeah, that's the bastard that can't come near a school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we had to, we went back to, uh, to cover that sperm that sperm bank scene, but now we know we roll back to the future where we were at. We know Ruby's plan now, so she really wanted to because Ash has been going there for for to the sperm bank for years. <laughs> they also make reference to Brock's deposits. Oh gosh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he had a good what is they said he had a good amount or something like that, but we couldn't oh, use that's it. Right, like he had a quality. Yeah, but we couldn't <laughs> use it. Why not? He had syphilis. Like oh <laughs> god. <laughs> oh, so oh, we know that god. Ruby quite literally wanted to kill his seed. It wasn't necessarily his offspring. It was his seed. Yeah. Wow. I mean, what a task, though. It's like the guy's been going there for years. Yeah, and stuff is everywhere. No. She's got a a long haul ahead well, of her. If you remember, in one of the scenes, um, they they pan back from the inside of one of the coolers, and there's a tray of vials, of vials and vials, and they all say Ash Williams, Ash Williams, <laughs> Ash Williams. And it's also actually in this in this season that we find out because his name is Ashley J Williams. We find out what the J stands for do you remember what it is joanna <laughs> ashley joanna williams why would you name me that it made you stronger and they were so quick about it because i had to rewind <laughs> it i remember that because they were like all right it's ashley joanna williams i was like wait did they say joanna <laughs> jo- oh anna <laughs> poor ash oh, and, and see that just made it i honestly watching this uh, this rewatch this time, I have come to appreciate um, his dad far more as a character than I did oh, yeah. the first time. Oh yeah, it, he man, he is hilarious. Yeah, this Lee Majors, awesome, awesome guy. Hey man, and um, now we go. So now we know Ruby's plan. She's she cuts off her son. Well, he has to do. He cuts off his hand. We know her plan is to swap ashes. For some reason, after all this shit's happening, Brandy wants to go to prom or homecoming or whatever it is, some school dance still. 
Are you sure that's a wise idea? Okay, so she's going to go. Um, Kelly, who was possessed by Ruby's friend, uh, the, the traitor, I can't remember her name, says, I'll go with her to the dance, tells Ash. It'll be, it'll be okay. All right. Damn. So she's at the, at the dance. You know, I have the little, little nostalgia. You know, I was like, oh, I remember those days. Going to high school dances and senior high school dances. Yeah. But, uh, of course, Miss Previs there, or Ruby, and, you know, they're, she comes out with a moment of silence for her friend, the blonde girl that died at the beginning of the season. And, did you know she was going to do this? Had no idea. Okay. But then, and then we bust to another scene where... Ash is coming into the high school. But we quickly find out that it's not really Ash. Because you see some uh, some teenagers smoking on the stairwell. He chops them up. I mean, he's <laughs> with blood and shit everywhere. And then, uh, of course, the police start chasing him. Was it the police or security? The police start chasing him up yeah. the stairs and through the hallways and stuff. And then the real ass shows up, and so they start chasing him. So we're back to the to the good ash, evil ash. You know, we keep getting good ash, evil ash, and it it, all, it never it never gets old. No, now, I love this scene with ash. <laughs> the scenes with ash fighting himself. Um, I think their battle in this one, though, eventually when it happens, you know, because the bad ash goes into the dance hall, wherever they're dancing, the gymnasium, and just starts killing people. Brandy thinks, my dad's lost it. Miss Prevert was right. Well, the real Ash, our hero, Ashley Joanna Williams, shows up. <laughs> and they're, they're, their fight scene here, I think, is... It's better than any of the other Ash versus Ash fight scenes, in my opinion. Um, I think that I don't know why. I just think that overall, it came off better. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I could see that just in the fact that uh, maybe knowing that this was the last season, I guess it felt like there may have been a little bit more of a finality to it. But it also as, as much as this could do. It's also like in an army of darkness. It was very comedical. You know, slapstick, mm -hmm. you know. And in season two, it was the same way. It was very funny. You know, it was very slapstick. But in this one here, it's not really that funny. I mean, they have their their one-liners and stuff, but it's really a battle. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I like this battle more, you know, I think. Yeah, you know? I could see that. But, of course, our hero prevails. And... Ruby's going to throw the Kandarian dagger. Was it a Kandarian or was it just a knife? I thought it was the dagger. It might be the dagger. So it's going to throw that ash and Brandy jumps in the way. Dude, this yeah, is, yeah, this is heart, was. heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, because you see, it, it's a, it's a short-lived little thing here, but you see Bruce Campbell, he, he he's portraying some actual caring about this about his daughter mm -hmm. you know the character is ash and he's like you can see it in his face he's really heartbroken like, wow dude yeah which is sort of uh that's a good way to reference what happens later on yeah. oh, <clears> near yeah. the end yeah um, yeah with that connection yeah um so ash takes you know, Brandy's body, they go back to wait no, because Pablo was at the school too and he's with Kelly and he's getting ready to kiss Kelly or he says, Kelly says something like, oh that we've kissed or something like that before um, but Pablo's like you're not Kelly You know, I know she's not Kelly um, so she 
Pablo tells Ash they have to come up with a plan. But they go to the basement of the hardware store. And I guess in some reflection somewhere, um, Pablo sees Kelly. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and I forget what it is, but yeah, it's like, like a strange little stranger yeah. thing, kind of a thin veneer between worlds. Yeah, and that's when Ash in his head puts together um, back from season, or not even season one, Evil Dead one, when they had that little ghost of Professor Noby floating around, he puts it together, mm-hmm. the rift. They're stuck in the rift. I don't know how he puts these two together because it's Ash, uh, you know, but uh, he does. And he says, they got to be alive in the rift. And he comes up with this whole huge plan that he is the chosen one. He's going to go into the rift, save his people and bring them back. You know, Kelly eventually, no, it was Dalton, Kelly and Brandy. Well, the only way to get to the rift is you have to be killed by the evil. Boy, I mean, the 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 whole the story that they created for this. I mean, this is in order to make your way to that rift, you got to be killed by the evil. So, Pablo's like, "Hey, we got the Kandarian dagger," and Ash is going to kill himself. He's, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> and the whole countdown. All right, we'll do it together. Pablo's got his hands on the dagger. One, he says, two, and then he says two and a half, and Pablo says three, and it shoves it in, and he's like, oh. But it does successfully kill him. He does successfully wake up in the rift. And we saw earlier um, when we had Dalton, Kelly, and Brandy running around in the, in the rift that when you open up doors, it leads to other places. It doesn't just lead to where it's supposed to. It's just kind of big maze. But Ash somehow finds his way right to the bar where they're at. <laughs> you know, he opens a door, opens another door, or he's in the sperm bank. And he opens a door and he's in the bar. And I, where, where they're at. And I'm like, wow. Okay. It seemed like a dream. Like it's yeah. the two favorite places in the world, you know? <laughs> the bar and the sperm bank. Yeah. There you go. Uh, but now they need to escape the rift. And they had this big idea. They have to get back to the big basement that's underneath. Because in the rift, it's basically a replica of Elk Grove. Kind of like, uh, what do they call it in Stranger Things? The be- below or the beneath? Okay, something upside like that. down. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So they know that they have to get to um, the basement on the underside of the hardware store. So Pablo can open up a portal and they can get back in. They can come back out or whatever. This whole fight, the Delta. This was a pretty good scene, I thought. Um, because, you know, Dalton's like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there and I'm going to distract him. You guys get away. Ash, save your daughter and Kelly, is what he says. They decide to hop into Delta. And they're like, it's not going to work. Everything here is dead. He does, you know, and then we got all these hands coming up out, pulling the Delta underground. Which I thought that was a good effect. I like yeah. that. But the Delta turns over. Roars to life. You know, Ash is given, you were made, you were in wherever, Grand Rapids, Michigan or something like that. You're, you're, you, you don't die. <laughs> well, the, the Delta comes back to life and they pull the Delta underground and you just hear they're, they're painting around in the street and you hear and all of a sudden the Delta breaks <laughs> out of the ground. And it's one of those moments you're like, yeah, yeah. You know, your hero is back. Uh, I don't know, that scene. Glory. Beautiful but, glory coming out of the ground. Yeah. And then they make it. And, and it's, it's so odd because every other door everywhere in the rift doesn't go where it's supposed to. But when I get to the hardware store, they go in and it goes right into the hardware store. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) They go downstairs and they're like, 
Pablo, you had one job. In the meantime, Pablo was fighting a deadite in the in the real hardware store. Uh, one of the girls from the dance that got killed. He sticks her head in a paint shaker. <laughs> yes, <laughs> dude, that was that was a pretty good graphic there. That was pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, like, her head's just shaking, and then just rips off. <laughs> Wow, dude, that was... But then Pablo starts, because he's a brujo especial. So he looks at the TV. Ash's uh, commercial starts to play him, but then he hears Ash. Pablo, you had one job. And he's like, oh, <laughs> Ash. He's got to run downstairs, and he hears open the portal. Um, Brandy jumps through. Ash is like, Kelly, come on. Kelly can't, because somebody's in her body. Makes sense, right? I mean, yeah. e- Evil Dead. Ash comes out. Brandy and Ash are, are alive. But then they realize that, okay, we got to deal with whoever's in Kelly. So we Kelly can come back. because We got we to save Kelly. Whew. We're coming toward the end here. Um, Pablo's role as Brujo Especial. He, this is what brings him to, to be able to um, guide Ash into the rift and to bring him back because he has all these powers now. And he can control, or not really control, but he can read and use the Necronomicon mm-hmm. um, because of his Brujo Especial thing. Well, Ash and Brandy are back at you know their house in... Ash has to go and deal with some shit. He says, Brandy, you're not going. You're staying here. Leaves her double barrel. Says, anybody comes through that door, just shoot him. Okay. But then Brandy has her whole scene uh, where she goes out into the shed and her phone rings and it's her mother. And then we have this whole scene here where she's going to lop off her hand. But then it's like a dream. She comes out of it. But then she ends up destroying. There was was there a deadite in there? Or was it just the phone? No, the phone became. Didn't the phone like? Yeah, yeah. Sprout, the phone started acting crazy. Yeah, sprouting to something or other. She has her own little um, fight with uh, with that blood soaked and everything. Um, and in the meantime, I wish I could remember what the hell the name of that demon that was possessing Kelly. Because her and Ruby are conspiring. Now, they have one of the Knights of Sumeria back uh, with them at Miss Previtt's house. And she's like, the Dark Ones know where the rift is. They're going to come through. We betrayed them. And so they took out one of the Knights of Sumeria and they basically draining her blood out of her. Um, And they cut a big chunk of her skin off of her back because... They're gonna. Ruby has a plan. That's that's the page of the Necronomicon. I guess they're made out of human skin. Yeah, that was what I got from it. It's like they're they're making a new page. Yeah. So you're just like, God, that's brutal, man. Yeah. That is so nasty. She starts writing on it and everything on this skin, and she's like, "Give me the pen," and and it's basically just a, a iron pick that she dips in the blood and starts writing on the. <laughs> wow, but then this this. This woman, the night of Sumeria, I can't remember her name, but she gets up and takes off. She's got all the, and all of her major arteries. She has, you know, needles draining the blood out, tubes. She starts taking off. I'm like, honey, you're not going to make it very far. Yeah, it's like seven, eight feet is about yeah. as far as you're going to go. I've given blood before. You get dizzy quick. She, she drops, and then the blood just, big pool of blood. Damn, dude. That, that sucks. Yeah. But, that is that would... called exsanguination? The what? Isn't that called exsanguination? When you're blooded? Yeah, yeah. Drain out of your body? Oh, yeah, I forgot all about that. That's Yeah, nice. So my brain is good sometimes. Right, I like that. <laughs> New got, Good word. <laughs> oh, shit. So, and then we, we come to the last episode of the season. The Dark Ones make it through the portal. 
And Pablo was down there in the basement as they come through the portal. But they don't do anything to him. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I wonder if, I think it's either because he was possessed by the book, maybe he was marked or something. But I think it could just as easily be the, because he's the new badass Bruja. Yeah, that he it's it's like walking around a bear for them. Like, yeah. you leave him alone. It could be both. I mean, it could be that he's the Nubrujo Especial, plus he's taken on the Necronomicon as well. Maybe that's part of him. I don't know. But they leave him alone for whatever reason. And they are searching for Ruby. They want Ruby. Um, This. When. When they, the Dark Ones show up at Miss Previtt's house to confront uh, Ruby and... Damn, I can't remember that demon's name. The traitor uh, that's in Kelly's body. Mm-hmm. The Dark Ones just take their souls right out. Yeah. That was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was surprising. It was surprising in how quick it was. Yeah. Because I was expecting a, something far more elongated. Yeah, it, it was it was very very quick, and when it happened, I was like, "Oh, he got Kelly's body back," you know, and that that's what opens it up for Kelly to come back. But, but there is a six foot tall, or I'm sorry, sixty foot tall, Tandarian <laughs> demon. That comes out of the ground and starts tramping through Elk Grove. Yeah, what? Would, what did, do you remember what they called that thing? This is a Candarian demon, wasn't it? I thought it had a name. I could be. Oh, wrong. maybe it was. I have to, I'm going to tell you what. When we're done here, I'm going to rewatch that episode because I love that episode. This episode is awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, military is showing up because of this demons attacking the town. You know, you got fighter planes trying to bomb it and everything. Like it's like a war zone. They're trying to defeat this huge ass demon, sixty foot demon. Ash makes a promise to his daughter. You know, I know he said something earlier. Um, I, I won't leave you, or something like that. Or so, he says something like that. But then he ends up locking him up in an ambulance and says, "Get him out of here," because mm-hmm. he's the chosen one. He's his time has come. You know. Yeah. And. What he does, I don't, I don't know that it would actually work, but it's cool as hell. Oh, yeah. You know, he gets in that tank, uh, loads up one of those big ass bullets, I guess you say. Uh, tank shells. Yeah, well, a shell. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. And he, he, he straps the Kendarian dagger to it <laughs> and loads it into the, into the, into the, I don't know, what are those things? I'm not very familiar with tanks. I'll call it the tube. The tube. <laughs> Loads it into the tank tube. And uh, he has one liner there. I can't remember what he says. I know he flips him off. He's like, wow. He yeah. jumps down there and starts running. He shoots at him. He shoots the Kendarian dagger at the Kendarian demon. Hits him. Kills him. Yeah. And then the demon falls on top of the tank. Ash make, brings it, makes it out. He kind of crawls out. And he's like, oh, mm-hmm. he's fading quick. He's like, oh. and then you see, all, all you really see is hit from his point of view, you know, everything's blurry and fading out. But somebody's picking him up and they're carrying him away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, and, and they like sort of put like tape on him. Yeah. It looks like. Yeah. They, they kind of carry him away and they're like, they put him in something, you know, for, and we're like, what the shit is going on here with this? But uh, we then see also that these Kandarian demons, it wasn't just Elk Grove. You know, they were mm-hmm. popping up all over the place. So you're like, damn. Is Ash dead? And it makes you wonder, you know, it's like if they're popping up all over the place. It, I, I did wonder why. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think they ever really address it, but I did no. wonder why it was always like boom, boom, boom. Well, from what I understand, they had plans of making a season four, um, depending on how this one turned out. Um, but then I think I think right when the season started, they it, it got canceled. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so they were like, well, there goes season four. Well, I guess we're not doing it. So, and this is when they, they, they specifically made this ending because of that. Now, I don't remember. Does that say how many years in the future it happens? Because we get a time jump, a huge time jump. No, it, it's, it's not far, really. I, it's far into I the future. Like a couple of hundred years. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be because, um, this container opens up. Ash comes out. It's like a big white room. It's got a sterile room, basically. And he's in this jumpsuit, this futuristic looking jumpsuit kind of thing. It's like, it's one of those scenes that's like, where the hell? You know, and then we have this robot Jane, I don't know what her name comes in. Robot. But very feminine. Yeah, robot. very pretty robot. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. And as even as the robot comes in and says, "Chosen one, you're you're awake." Okay, come on, we got work to do, or something like that. And even as the robot's walking away, Ash is like checking her ass out. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, I love how he's just he's always him. Yeah, it's like it's been several hundred years, and he's like, oh. All right, I'd give that a spin. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they uncover this car. I, that's all I can say. It, it, it's Is it the Delta? Because that's Ash's so. car. It has to be the Delta. Um, it has to be the Delta. It doesn't. It, just, it looked too similar. It doesn't look anything like the old Delta, though. Yeah. I mean, it's got yeah. a big old 50 cal gun up top and <laughs> cages are all around and everything and a big old shovel on the front. You know, the snow shovel on the thing on the front. Uh-huh. And Mad right, Max out. <laughs> right in the front, it says, Hail to the King. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's just the scene. It, he gets in the car, revs the engine. And how does it end? Groovy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's, that's, the, that's the movie I want to see. Uh, yeah, that's if they if they would have done a season four, that's the season four I want to see, you know, because yeah, obviously when he killed that first Kandarian demon, he was going to die until the Knights of Sumeria re- saved him, mm-hmm. and they brought him, you know, to, I guess they put him in like cryogenic sleep or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, but we're left with a world that is now in disarray. The Kandarian demons that were popping up everywhere back in back when he killed the one in Elk Grove, we know what happens. They destroyed the world. Mm. Now, this has to be the world that he wakes up from in the original ending of the Army of Darkness. Has to be. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be. You know, very, very dystopian. And it's just like everything's destroyed. But I like how they make that callback too, you know. Mm-hmm. Because as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, that's that's the original ending of Army of Darkness. Yeah. That's where he woke up. But this is definitely a movie I want to see. You know, yeah, that. and you know, it's it's funny when I was watching this, I noticed how so much of this season actually was sort of a direct reference to Army of Darkness. Yeah, a lot like of them. the like the three the, the three bowls of blood yep. is very similar to when he's, you know, coughing and trying to you know, choose uh, yeah. And yeah, like at the end, you know, it's the same sort of desolate landscape. Yeah, and the nice scenario. I, I feel like the whole thing was very much a tribute to Army of yeah, Darkness. It and definitely was. It is a shame they didn't go any further because it would be cool to see what happens a little more into that world now. Yeah. Cause he's still the chosen one. I guess there's no mm-hmm. time frame that he has to end the evil. Right. You know, but because he's still, yeah, he's still the chosen one. I want to see that movie. Yeah. We need to start sending emails out or something. Yeah, we'll we'll start, yeah, like a little grassroots campaign yeah. <laughs> 10 make years a, after the fact. <laughs> we, can make, we can make a make a fan film. Ah, there we'll you do. go. Those have gotten pretty solid on YouTube. I they can have. see that. Have you seen that one? Um, I can't remember what it's called. Don't walk in the woods or something like that. It's or don't. Uh, oh, Jason Wood. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah, brought that was not bad. And they brought Tommy Jarvis back. Their original yeah. brought him back. That was good stuff. Was, that was cool. Wow. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've, I've watched all those. Some are not that good, but yeah. that one was pretty solid. That one was good. Yeah. Now, so yeah. I would, yeah. If somebody ever got squirrely and decided to do this, I'd be so happy. Yeah. Dave, Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 3. What are your final thoughts on this? I I love it. Uh, of the three, I think it's the one I like the least. Um, but that that's not a criticism. It's it's <clears throat> it's literally, I think, the only thing that kind of threw me was the baby. <laughs> Even though I enjoyed the baby, I was still like, oh. Yeah. No, you're bringing a baby into the. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I think that made me a little uncomfortable initially. <laughs> yeah. Because like, shit is not going to go well for this child. No. <laughs> not in this world. <laughs> Wonder who that. But I love it. It's a. It's. It's still. And, and I do like the ending. I like that it's got a. It doesn't leave you thinking this is the end. Yeah. Not at there, all. There's something happening, even though we're not seeing it. And so, yeah, I. It's a great show. I love it. Yeah, I loved it. Uh, I definitely, I think it's different than the other seasons. It While it still had its uh, its slapstick and its funny movements and, you know, how they all went into the whole, you know, sperm bank thing. And it still has that. But it, it, overall, I think this season seemed a little bit more serious. You know, mm-hmm. you know, it's it was a little bit more darker, um, because of the dark ones coming into it and everything like that. But I think I think the ending to this was perfect. Yeah. Um, I don't think that uh, if they would have ended it where Ash killed that Canarian demon, I don't think that I would have liked that too much. No. But no. since since they put on that futuristic ending. Um, I love. I gotta say that episode, the the final episode of this season, has got to be one of my favorite episodes of the whole series. I could see that, yeah, uh, now, yeah, because I really like it. It's really good. Yeah. Now the series overall, you're right. I think this is probably my my least favorite of all the, all the seasons. Um, but like, I don't hate it. I love it. Oh yeah. But uh, I think the first season for me was my favorite. Mm-hmm. My my favorite. And then the final episode. I do like the the fact that they throw in um, Ash has a daughter. So yeah. th- now we have an, we have a whole other avenue for future movies here now. Right? Because we have the bloodline of Ash. Ashley J. Williams is still alive. And we have Kellen Pablo, Pablo still. So, I mean, they got to do something with these characters. Dude. They have to. I know. I know they really they've got to at least bring them if they're going to be making more movies they've at least got to make an appearance in the movie they have they got to be part of the lore in some way they're too important now yeah they have to I know that they're 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 starting I think they're starting uh, they got a director um, set for the new Evil Dead movie I can't remember who it was Let's see. Well, I know that I saw something somewhere that they had something. Um, mm-hmm. Not Evil Dead Rise is the one that we're going to be doing next. Yeah, which is the final movie so far of the uh, the Evil Dead series. But I know that I saw somewhere that they had, um, yeah, new Evil Dead spinoff in the works. Um, because of the popularity and success of Evil Dead Rise, they got. Simply determining that we're finding more talent. Uh, I guess um, they're looking at a director named Benicek. Hmm. I mean, he made a French horror movie called Vermin. Uh, huh. I know I've that never seen Vermin. I know that they, it's in the works. Um, they're, it's already thinking about it. And I definitely think that, especially since they expanded the universe with Evil Dead Rise, which kind of opened it up even more. Mm-hmm. You know, they can put a Kelly and Pablo movie. They could put a, a Brandy movie out there um, for what happens in the meantime, because they're, they're going to be still battling this stuff. Yeah. You know, so I'd like to see yeah, that. Yeah, that would be kind of a cool little stopgap. Yeah. I would enjoy that. be fun. Yeah, I love this movie, uh, this, this show. 
this series this season even and like i said five six times already this final episode is gonna be one of my favorites and i'm actually probably gonna watch it again as soon as we get off of here <laughs> <laughs> yeah i might watch that final shot again i yeah, just love them just i love that popping in and like let's go battle evil again again <laughs> Oh, that's just, it is a lot of fun. And, oh, man, it, it, it's just, it makes me laugh at how much the people involved seem to enjoy making this. Yep. And uh, I think that's been the key to its success for so long. And I, th- I I really think that's what made the show so much fun. You know, I think there's a, my son was telling me about a con that's coming up here where um, Sam Raimi and Ted Raimi are going to be there. And I was like, dude. We gotta oh, go, yeah. and, and it's relatively yeah. close. You know, it's it's either in one of the Carolinas or Tennessee or Virginia or something like that. It's right around this area. I think someone mentioned that to me. It we're like we're going to the Galaxy Con in Raleigh in July. I don't think it's that. No, but well, but they, yeah, it I might think be. I heard something around here. It might be. Really, it might be the Galaxy Con. Raleigh. Damn, if it is, oh, if it is, then I'm, oh, I know where I'll be spending at least some of my money. I must have overlooked that then. Spend a couple hundred bucks there. I'm telling oh, you. Yeah. Easily, because you know Ted Raimi's not going to be, or Sam Raimi, Ted Raimi's going to be pretty, going to be cheaper, but Sam Raimi. Yeah. He's probably going to spend, a, he's going to one of those expensive photos. But, yeah. Ugh. I, I'll bite the bullet. I, I can go out yeah. and side gig and Uber or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze a little extra cash out of the day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's see. Yep. Sam Raimi. This is Galaxy Con Raleigh. It says Sam Raimi will no, be there. Shit. Sam Raimi will be there Saturday and Sunday. Um, Where's Ted? Ted Raymond will be, with, will be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I don't know how I missed that. That's insane. Because I, I bought the tickets because, um, honestly, I bought the tickets because we were going to go for, uh, there's several Buffy the Vampire Slayer people yeah. are going to be showing up. And so my daughters really wanted to go and uh, meet some of them. But I don't know how I missed Sam Raimi. I mean, goodness, that's yeah. that's now officially the top of my list. I'm going to have to go, yeah, just talk to the man. That's yeah. exciting. I'll, I'll, I'm going to get there. Um, I think when I think our thing is we we always go on a Sunday, um, because it's kind of yeah, we're going. It's a little died down. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I'll go there with my older son, and we'll go and hang out. And we'll have dinner or something afterwards. Cool. Yeah. Cool. We'll have to. I'll, I'll, uh, we'll have to touch base. So Absolutely. We can, uh, hang out for a bit. Absolutely. So, Dave, as we close out this episode, finally of the seasons of Ash vs. Evil Dead, where can the good people out there in the interwebs find you? Oh, they can go find me. But at only the good Piedmont people. Tri- oh, what? Only okay. the good people. Yes, yeah, only good people. Only the good people. And, and I mean that in the in a very loose <laughs> sense. <laughs> but go to PiedmontTriadPodcast.com. That's where you can find all of uh, my shows and whatnot. I uh, was off the grid there for a couple of months because my computer kind of shit the bed and took forever to fix. So uh, finally... Finally ramping back up again, so it's it's exciting. So go there, and you can check out all the episodes that uh, I've uh, I've got put up. Yep. I tell you that most recent episode you did there. I'm not much into that type of music. Yeah, me neither. But I was like, eh, it's not too bad. I, mean, I, the- I that's it. Was, it surprised me that I dug it. I really yeah. was surprised by that. Yeah, and I, and I, <laughs> and, I like uh, that. Uh, there was at some point during the interview there where. You're like, well, I listen to mostly metal, and he's like, well, yeah, I know, I did my research on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that he appreciated that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was good. It was good. Uh, good interview. I like that, and it turned me on to. Thanks. I won't say it publicly too much, but uh, I think I might have a new genre of music I would listen to. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, it'll be spoken of softly and only in certain circles. Yeah. Well, now everybody out there on the damn interwebs knows it too. So. Damn it. Uh, right <laughs> <laughs> but that's it that's it for this episode of guess what you're wrong everybody out there sweet dreams love peace and chicken grease and that's gonna do it for the day thanks for hanging out with me and let me bend your ear for a while ain't no time for bad shine <laughs> 
And until next time, don't forget. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> Later, Tater. This concludes our broadcast day. Good night and God bless America.